Mr. Stevens, if you want to come up. Uh, so we're going to have several uh, different uh, members of our team give a testimony of what they did, and um, one of those is uh, Mr. Stevens. I love Mr. Stevens. He's missions ready, whether he realizes it or not, uh, from his embassy work and his days in the Marines. And anytime I take a child of mine, I like to take him as well, just uh, for safety. And uh, But he had a great opportunity and a unique uh, evangelistic opportunity. He's going to come and tell you uh, how the trip impacted him. It was a pleasure and a privilege to make my third trip to the Dominican Republic. I was told before going there that I would be uh, possibly speaking or maybe even training some uh, police officers, a group of, of police officers, uh, maybe 80 or so. And uh, that information changed uh, and it was, it was quite fluid and then it turned out that it wasn't going to be police officers at all. It was uh, some firemen and fire, uh, fire department cadets, young uh, teenagers. And it was more like about 250 of them um, with uh, some moms and some, some kids there. And uh, it, it was a, a great uh, blessing to be able to speak with them. I prepared uh, with a, uh, a, an organization called Seedline International uh, in, in uh, Indiana. It's an organization that Kistler, Dave Kistler uses to prepare his booklets and pamphlets and tracts and stuff like that. And so we had a, a John and Romans made up in Spanish, um, especially for police, but that's okay. We w went ahead and, uh, 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 and uh, were able to, to meet with them. Before that, uh, I continued with the training with the, the security team. I wasn't able to do much because of the surgery on my hands. I didn't, uh, couldn't do a whole lot of uh, hands-on stuff, but uh, we were able to integrate what we call less lethal um, options. I, uh, took some uh, expandable batons down there, trained them on expandable batons, gave them an, an additional option if they have to use force to, to protect the, uh, the, uh, the, the grounds there. And so we got that, that integrated. Um, and then the, the, just a, a very busy week of, of, of ministry, Shane and, and Pastor Garcia uh, teaching the, um, the, uh, the pastors, my wife and, and, and uh, Mrs. Schroeder uh, and Pat McKinney, uh, teaching the, uh, the uh, pastor's wives. Uh, on Saturday uh, was when we had the, the, the large meeting with the, uh, the firefight fighters and, and cadets. What, what brought them there is a, uh, an organization, a nonprofit organization out of uh, Buffalo, New York, that works with fire department uh, stations around the, the, the Dominican Republic. The, uh, the young man that started that organization uh, is a uh, volunteer firefighter, a paramedic, you know, that type of thing. And he wanted to minister directly to fire departments and fire department personnel and first responders. And they've built up a, 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 just a tremendous um, program where they meet and, and disciple and have Bible studies uh, in, in uh, each of the, the fire stations. And they brought out, they bust out uh, over 200, right around 250 people uh, to the Highlands. So we had that... Uh, that opportunity on Saturday. It was supposed to be a testimony on my part. What I basically did was integrate, integrated a, a testimony of my experience as a Marine and, and as a police officer, and I worked it into the Romans Road and uh, presented a, a Romans Road um, uh, testimony and uh, a Romans Road uh, 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 message. And, um, and then after me came two or three more people and a uh, uh, the young man that works there at the Highlands with, with Eddie, his name is Michael, he's a missionary from Costa Rica. He gave a, uh, an invitation and 20 kids responded to the invitation, so it was quite a blessing. Um, towards the end of the week, we went to a, a nursing home that we hadn't been before, and, and that's, that's going to be a point of, of conversation going forward. A tremendous opportunity where we can take uh, not a whole lot of materials, not a whole lot of money, and just uh, a, a, few, a few men, uh, uh, not a whole lot of manpower, and we can have the greatest impact. The old people that are basically abandoned by their families, they get no support from their families, they get no support from, from the, the, the the government, the, the pastor that works there takes, basically directs and takes care of them. And they had a need for food right then when we were there. We were able to have the blessing of helping them out with uh, some, some 
much needed uh, support to buy food for these uh, for these old folks that just have no no hope and, and nowhere to go. Um, the last thing that we did before heading to the airport was go back to the preschool that we've supported on, on previous trips. Uh, it's now up to the last time, the first time I was there and presented uh, with, with, with uh, pictures and everything, uh, four years ago now, uh, it was uh, not very good looking. It was pretty, pretty depressing looking, but they had 110 kids in there. Now it's much better looking, it's painted, it's much better organized, equipped, staffed, uh, and they're up to 140 kids. Um, and those kids are being taught their, 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 to read and to write and their math. Uh, they have computers that this church has provided. Uh, inverters were installed on this trip uh, so that when the, not if, when the electricity goes down in the entire area, they've still got electricity. And so their uh, fans, their lights, their computers are still up and running. It's much better uh, illumination, much better uh, atmosphere. Uh, for the kids to to uh, to take their their reading and writing lessons, the playground equipment that we uh, purchased on a previous trip was was in place and, and being used, and um, just uh, the the uh, it was a real blessing to see where we as a church, not we those of us who go there, we as a church, providing the 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 money and the materials to. Um, to try to be a blessing to a preschool that takes care of, of, of precious little children um, that otherwise would just be running in the streets and most of them naked um, and, and doing nothing. They've, they've got a, a safe, caring place to come to. It's a, a bright and upbeat place. They're, they're uh, getting Bible lessons. They're being, uh, they're being ministered to. Pastor Garcia uh, did his uh, cartoon drawing right there and, 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 and gave a gospel message. And, uh, and the kids are just beautiful. And uh, they're just a blessing to me. And I, and I uh, thank you for allowing me to go again. All right, Mrs. Mr. Stevens always a big help, but also Mrs. Stevens, she team teaches with uh, Karen. And uh, in fact, on the last trip, they were asking, where is Mrs. Stevens? So we brought her back and she was a, a big help and a blessing. And also uh, just in um, getting materials there, the, uh, the Stevens have been very generous in getting books and things like that. Um, that preschool is, in, is integral because the guys that we train in the pastor's class are able to go in there and give Bible. It's wide open. And even when we were there on this last trip, we saw that they were using the flashcards that we gave them the trip before. So not only now are the pastors doing it, but the teachers that are there are also integrating Bible themselves. And, and that's going to probably be the closest thing that they have a Christian school in Boca Chica. It's not a Christian school, but it's starting to look like one. And that's, that's part of what we do. Now, another uh, member of my team, uh, Mac McKinney, want to come up and talk about how this trip impacted him. Yes, uh, Pat and I, Pat McKinney, my wife, and I uh, said last time when we heard the reports we wanted to go this time. I hadn't been back to the Dominican Republic since 2012. And uh, so he said, uh, well, here's what I need you to do, logistics. Now, that's just a little bit big word that means gopher, put together stuff, carry this there, move that there. And that's the kind of stuff we did, hand out things. So in that area of logistics, I want to let you know, I'd like for John Schroeder to stand up. And this young man took an old retired gunny sergeant from the Marines and a chief master sergeant from the Air Force. And he said, now I got this project. And he said, in this bag, I want this and this. He would put a couple things, hand it to the Gunny sergeant, the gunny sergeant would hand it to the chief. We'd put it together and he said, now put them over here. So you had John telling uh, two veterans what to do and he did a really good job of it. Okay, and so thank you, John. Uh, and, and we did other things also and he and I had devotions every day and he just was very receptive and uh, doing the work. So I uh, thought that was good. Uh, during what I'm going to say here real quick is we means when we gave stuff, we means First Baptist Church. I'm not going to say that every time, but I just want you to know when we gave stuff, it was First Baptist Church, you people giving to this need. Uh, and you should uh, get the credit for that. And this uh, testimony that I'm saying, Pat McKinney and I 
sat down together and said, well, what do you notice? And she said some things and I said some things, which brings to light one of my points, which I'll get to, but I'll tell it now. One pair of eyes cannot see every need. And we had eight pairs of eyes, and I know if we had 80 pairs of eyes, each and every one of those pairs of eyes would see something that God would put on their heart. And so uh, we, those people have very little, but they took really good care of it, what they have. Uh, they need more. My wife noticed that everything and everyone being ministered to was clean and didn't have bad smells. And she's been in a, dozens of nursing homes and caring for elderly people. And she's kind of an expert on that. And she was impressed. She told the people, thank you for doing such a good job caring for these people. They had better than most facilities in the USA as far as the cleanliness, although it was older and needed stuff and they were shorthanded, they still are very good stewards of the money that we First Baptist Church gives to them. And so uh, the people are doing the work really cared for and took good care of those that they were ministering to and they had good attitudes. And we were burdened about their ministry's lack of fans in, in good working condition because there's no possibility of air conditioning. And if these uh, orphans and uh, nursing home residents and preschoolers uh, have to deal with no fan going it makes things hard difficult and they they just don't get the rest they need and they're cranky to deal with but the workers there did a great job at that and the cost of utilities lp gas electricity gasoline is high and they still have to make things go the water is not drinkable but sometimes they had no choice and they had to drink it we were had the luxury of carrying around bottled water with us all the time and so uh first place I ever been I brushed my teeth and I felt like I was brushing it in salt water from the bay out here so I didn't like that too much um, anyway uh, we uh, donated to purchase some fans but they still need more fans the nursery uh, the uh, um, nursing home the orphanage the preschool and the uh, little church out in the Cane Village, right? You go drive miles and miles past Cane, and in the center of that is where they have this uh, little church and pastor by a godly good man. Um, and so uh, the batteries that, we, that were bought uh, with the funds that were donated by this church were already installed. And when we got there on Monday morning, the power was out. But guess what? Lights were on, fans were running because that inverter was set up. You'll see that in the slides. Uh, speaking of the slides, we have 500 plus photos. I narrowed it down to, I think, 85 or 86, and Brother Schroeder will uh, go through those. But if you want to see uh, 300 more than you're going to see tonight, it's on our phones, it's on our cameras, it's on our iPads, whatever. Just come and check uh, because all this stuff is for these folks. Now, every item that we took uh, was needed for immediate use. Ed mentioned that and was and still not enough to meet the greater need. And there was one thing I thought about this before I ever went. I said, I love my wild socks. Don't you love my wild socks? Okay, these are just the blue and green ones, but I have some red ones and yellow ones and orange ones. And so I said, I'm taking these socks. Pat said, what are you taking socks for? I said, well, go to Walmart. We're going to get some socks. We got 11 pair of socks. I took those and she said, no, you ain't going to want socks. I laid them out on a table and there's a movie about it. It's called Gone in 60 Seconds. Those socks were gone. And guess what? The very next morning, guy come up to me and say, hey, Brother McKinney. In my sock and I raised my pant leg and said hey look at mine so uh, they like wild socks just like we do and I just thought that's something a little extra I wanted to do and God blessed me for it I really enjoyed it and so everything could have been given to even one of those ministries we dealt with and not touch the other ministries and it still wouldn't have been enough for that one ministry but each uh, of the ministries had been praying specifically for something that we that we the Lord allowed this church to provide and they used it 
and they were so grateful any little thing we were able to do. The roads were bad, motorcycles everywhere because you don't have to, uh, what does you call it, Pat? Uh, you don't have to have a driver's license. A 14-year-old kid can buy a motorcycle and run around all over the place and they use them for taxis and everything else. But they're recovering from the hurricane that hit and but the gospel is still being preached. And uh, God sees all and knows all. That's why I said one pair of eyes is not enough, but God sees everything. And he is in control of all that we do. Uh, we wanna thank the church and all the people that gave to this trip that made it possible for all that was done for the people in the places in which we, in the Dominican Republic. The people were so thankful for what was given to them from all of us and our church. They uh, thank God for all of you and that were willing to give to them in their need. Uh, to the people that most of you in this church have never met, yet you gave. And guess what? It's um, shocking and amazing how much we have and how little they have, but they're thankful and serving God. All right, we want to thank the McKinney's as you go ahead and put the slides up at this time and you go to the first slide. Uh, he talked about seeing things, so we want to show you some things this evening. I'm thank, uh, thankful for the McKinney's and their generosity. Uh, all the slides and everything, uh, Mac was our photojournalist for the trip. I don't like pictures and all that stuff, so he's taking care of that. And really, the, the idea that the inverters were, uh, batteries were up and running, that's, Mac worked on that before we went. And uh, he's worked on some things after and since, and so it really does take a team. Now, there's 18 pieces of luggage, and uh, you see Pastor Garcia there. Pastor Garcia was amazing on this trip. He was such a huge help uh, to all of us that were teaching because it cut the translation in half. Uh, he preached, and his last sermon he gave an altar call, and mo a, good, a good number of people went to that altar call. He would preach to the combined ladies and men each morning. We're up to about 100. Uh, both classes increased on this trip, and uh, so he was very effective there. And then he talked about Roman Catholicism, which was probably the second most important topic for the men. We did apologetics class. We had um, Eddie did atheism, Pastor Garcia did Roman Catholicism, I did Mormonism, but the most important one was Jehovah Witness. Uh, my guys told me that uh, last year, if you went to my village, there'd be two Jehovah's Witness. If I take you to my village today, there's 20. They are really targeting the sugarcane village because the people are ignorant and, uh, and, and feel that they have to have somebody explain the Bible to them rather than trusting the Word of God, pure, unadulterated Word of God. So that was huge. 18 uh, packs. There's, uh, there's Mrs. Stevens with us. She's still, she's still prepping on the way there. So if you want to know... Um, what we taught in the Dominican, Mrs. Stevens doing a was class, the same as in the Dominican. Oh, by the way, Pastor Garcia doing a was class, the same thing that he did in the Dominican. And then um, I taught on Jehovah's Witness in Sunday school before we left. So uh, we definitely try to multiply that tr uh, plane ride uh, off uh, real quick. We're close. We get there real fast. We can, uh, we can bring help very quickly. And uh, Pastor Garcia, of course, enjoying the plane ride the whole time. If you ever travel with Pastor Garcia, you know what that means. Well, uh, we sent, the, uh, Maciel wants to thank you, that's Eddie's wife. We sent more things on this trip than any trip before. They set aside a room for us and packed it out. So when we got there, we had to start unpacking the room. You can see some of the supplies there. And uh, there's Eddie, he's uh, such a great help to me and a blessing, glasses. They love glasses. So the ladies got glasses, the guys got glasses, and we still had glasses, which they needed in the mobile clinic. One of the things that's rough is we'll send them supplies ahead of time. They'll open the box and they'll go, can we have this? We need this now. And sometimes we have to say, well, that's actually for the class and the window's too short. I have to ship early. It goes on, it goes on a boat. And uh, so it was good that there were no leftovers. Leftovers are just, there's another need to meet. So that was good to have those. And uh, you could see some more supplies there. And uh, clothes was a big deal. I didn't realize how big a deal clothes was. We've never made clothes a big deal in the guys class. You know, we're guys, so clothes. But um, this time we had a lot of clothes. And so I told the guys they could have five items of clothing. I've never seen guys move so fast. And uh, it was all, boom, gone. And uh, we had a little bit left over, so after the pastors got their finances, I let them, and they wiped that out. Uh, one of the things we give, gospel tracts, you'll see there in the front. Uh, we gave um, a lot in the supplies in the sugarcane village. Uh, we did some 
uh, toothpaste and toothbrushes and things like that. Bags are very crucial for those motorcycles. That's their backpacks are a big deal. John, uh, this is part of John's, uh, every one of my kids, we heard this morning about discipleship. Part of discipleship for my kids is going on a missions trip. I want my kids to think missions is normal. Missions is normal. Now, that, that, I can't take all the credit for that. My dad started that. He, he goes to Pakistan. My sister goes to Uganda. I was, I was kind of late to the table. I go to the Dominican now. But every one of my children have been there. I want them to see uh, the need. And so he's getting ready to get some kids happy when we go to Oliveras. Next slide, please. Uh, John uh, also was helping the McKinney's. And uh, Mrs. McKinney was a big help. I know she didn't come up here, but she organized a lot of the clothes and uh, she uh, distributed those. Uh, and uh, so she was a big help there. And really the McKinney's, just anything that I needed, they were a big help. I don't know if we could advance the slide. All right, well, if we don't advance the slide, let's talk about the classes. Uh, all right, so the classes, um, oh, there we go. So hey, there's the classes. And uh, you can see up there, Michael, he's translating for me. Now Michael's great. Uh, in this sense, Michael has left Costa Rica to come to the Dominican. He's a true missionary. I love Eddie, but Eddie's ministering to his people. I mean, he's doing, he's doing what he needs to do. Uh, but Michael has made a sacrifice and come from Costa Rica. And what I mean by that is he has no medical care, and his wife is due in August. And so you'd have to go back to the Costa Rica to get medical care that he's covered for. But you, if you know this, once a lady's a certain amount of pregnant, you don't go on a plane. So you could pray for them. Um, also, his wife, Andy, she's just decided to, to forego any cancer treatments during, during that pregnancy. And so you need to pray for her. Uh, she's just decided we're not going to do anything that's going to affect this child. So pray for a good delivery, and then pray that when the doctors go back, God blesses, and there's, it's just not there. It's just not there because she was faithful. She was told to let that baby go, and she said that's, no, that's not God's way. That's not God's way. Uh, there's Pastor Garcia. He's moving so fast. Uh, can you tell? But really, he enjoyed himself, too. He enjoyed himself, and the men enjoyed him. It was great to have different personalities. Eddie has a different personality than me. Pastor Garcia certainly has a different personality than me. So that, was, that helps when you're in class for a day, when you're in class for a day. So, and they were taking notes. That's what I loved about the pastors there. They were taking notes on what Pastor Garcia was preaching. There's Mrs. Stevens teaching, and uh, they have a great classroom. They got uh, IT and everything, um, laptop and projector. Anyways. Uh, they have a great classroom setting, and uh, the big thing is materials. We're there for a week, but the materials that are there, we, that we leave with them, they really have an opportunity to study. Uh, this here is uh, the guys' class, probably all of us, and uh, there should be three photos, uh, one all of us. Those are new guys. Uh, these, uh, there's the ladies. Oh, somewhere we lost the returning guys. There's all the ladies' class. Um, this is uh, Andy giving her testimony, you can see. Uh, she's talking about how God's been dealing in her life. There's Sarah, uh, Karen's translator on the trip. And uh, Dominicans, uh, they multi-purpose everything. Somewhere this luggage became a toy earlier. I don't know. They, there it is. And uh, so anything is uh, an adventure for them. They did something new. They offered child care. They really want a time for the pastors and the pastor's wives um, in order to study. And so they offered child care, I think, up to age five. That was new this year. We added that. Here's, uh, here's Mr. Stevens really preaching, to be honest with you. Uh, it was supposed to be testimony, but he's preaching. He got them lost. Let me tell you. He got them lost. And uh, then uh, Michael preached after, and 20 people got saved. Uh, there's uh, Maya. She's just uh, Eddie's uh, daughter, and she's just a blessing fireball, full of energy. Uh, most, uh, and there's Maciel and Sarah, and um, there's the ladies once again. And uh, that, that Sunday school material is a big deal. That Sunday school material that we're giving, those flashcards, um, that's, that's really, they have no other way of getting those things. Technology, I gave out, this must be my, uh, this must be all of us all together. Um, I gave out a laptop, a tablet, and a mini computer while I was there, and the IT guy came up to me and he says, you have no clue what you've done. There, there'd be no way in their entire lifetime they would be able to get one of these things. And so just for studying purposes, uh, really, really increase that. So our first half is usually teaching. You did see there, uh, this is uh, downtown Boca Chica. Uh, you did see um, Ed preaching. We we're so thankful for that because it added an evangelistic element that we hadn't had in the past. So now we're preparing teachers. We've got an evangelism effort. But the second part of the trip is really mercy ministries, really reaching out to people um, that have no way to provide for themselves. Uh, sadly, in Dominican culture, 
Uh, sometimes that happens. They do try to feed them and have them gain weight while they're there, and uh, they, you'd be successful if you ate everything they gave you. Uh, and there's uh, Maciel jumping in the kitchen. They have a great chef uh, that they, they have there. He's just great and helpful. Well, Pastor Garcia. Well, if you go on a trip with Pastor Garcia, it's always an adventure. But really, you know, missions trips change people. Uh, not just missions trips. Trips, when you get with other Christians and you go on a trip, um, it changes people and it grows stronger ties. There's times of fellowship. You understand each other in ways you didn't before. Sometimes you learn things you never knew. Uh, here's the nursing home, and I, I want to make this a priority from here on out. Um, Eddie, for some reason, thought that I had gone here, had never gone here, and uh, Mrs. Howell pointed out to me she went on a trip, and uh, we've been there, and now that we've been there, we need to go there. They, they need help. They've got 52 uh, people there, more guys than girls in Dominican culture. Um, oftentimes, if a person needs too much medical help, at least, the, at least in this area, I'm talking the sugarcane, okay? The capital is a whole nother world. But in the sugarcane, they abandon them. And guys more than uh, girls because the guys have been having um, children with multiple women, sometimes never getting married, and the kids do not feel responsible for them because of the way they handle themselves. Well, it comes to the end of their life, and this is where they go. This is a church. Look at the size of that church, and that's the pastor there. And that church, that size, like right where this uh, table is, that's, that's the platform. So just that size supports 52 people in that orphanage. When we went there, they had one day of food left. One day of food left, and so we gave them money for food. Uh, price of propane went up. Uh, this here is the orphanage, and uh, Ma yeah, Max showing you what the orphanage used to look like and what it looks like now. And um, so they've definitely improved there. These had an immediate need for medicine. We gave them money for medicine, and they said, as, uh, you know, politely, as soon as you leave, we're leaving and going and get medicine. Uh, great need for fans there. Uh, uh, your, the church and the McKinney's a, a bit of big help there. There's what an inverter looks like. That one's the one at the nursing home, in case you're wondering. And it's the batteries that we supplied over at the, um, the preschool elementary. Though I, I don't know if we call it a preschool anymore. She, I think she's just adding a grade as they, she doesn't want to lose any kids. And uh, now these guys, they need physical touch. They need physical touch. Also, if you could play a small instrument, it's amazing how they respond to those. Um, here's Pastor Garcia in uh, Baptist Church of Olivares. That is the most well-used church I've seen in a sugarcane village. I mean, they do adult literacy. They do homework. They provide the lunch basically for all of those kids while the parents are at work Monday through Friday. Uh, they have obviously all the church services. And so there's Pastor there preaching after he did his uh, cartoons. The kids were fascinated by the whole cartoons. These kids were incredibly well-behaved. I mean, incredibly well-behaved and listening to the gospel. Oh, see, that's why, see, because he does stuff like that. And uh, Pastor Garcia, I wish he could be here tonight, uh, but he, he really became attached and saw a lot of things and saw a lot of needs, and he is just, he's missions ready, too. He just is effective um, wherever we go. He didn't want to leave. He was playing football with a kid, and I had to pull him away from pulling football with a kid, but... They need that. There's the batteries we've been talking about, and um, they're actually the preschool we found out had two inverters already donated, and so they were able to split the batteries between the two, and they were able to have the whole facility running by running two inverters. And like um, I think Max said, that day the community had no power. You could hear strange things happening outside the, the compound of the community. It's amazing the security that they had to have, and this time they had a guy out in the street as well and uh, just the security concerns there, and yet the kids there have thoroughly got the gospel. The exciting thing about this is um, when I asked her what her needs were, she didn't have any. That's how effective you've been as a church. I'll go next time, take photos of the fans that we purchased, and if she doesn't have needs again, I'll redirect all those efforts to the nursing home because that's really, they, they need, we need to get them to that place. We need to get them to that place. Uh, this is Pastor Garcia was just um, amazed by Dominican ingenuity and nothing is wasted. Nothing is wasted. I used to put a box up front when I teach and I'd throw all my garbage there and at lunch the guys would come up and get the empty water bottle so I stopped doing that. That's how desperately they need things but they repurpose everything. Again this is out in the sugarcane villages. This one's Boca Chica. Silence, I like that. Um, hopefully somewhere there's, uh, we have a whole computer lab there now that we provided. Uh, there's some supplies we were bringing, some supplies we were bringing. Uh, this is the outside classrooms. They have three of those, and uh, these are really well-behaved. There's Pastor Garcia again doing his cartoons. 
there he is again preaching. There's the computers that you've provided. And so we, we really honestly, we thank the church. There's nothing like being a steward of a giving church. And if you don't realize, I really try to focus on daily things, things that affect people's lives daily when we do uh, mercy missions. And uh, you, you've changed the level of education in that place. And um, she's, she's working hard to bring that up to a pretty high standard. Uh, that, there I am as a deacon doing what deacons should do for pastors. I'm holding the poster board. That was my job that day. And uh, so we've got fans. There's the inverter batteries installed. There's the inverter above. And um, there's the director of the preschool. And uh, there's Mac hanging out with some kids. There's your Sunday school material, not from this trip, but the last trip being used in the Christian school. And we're not even asking that that happen, but she, she's a Christian. She's a, she's a believer. And um, there's Ed preaching some more. And he was preaching. Here we are with Michael. Uh, we went over to the San Francisco Giants side. Some people are interested in that kind of stuff. But it turned out to be important because we came to understand Michael's situation much better. Because he's not Dominican, he doesn't get a lot of the benefits that the other employees at Rawlings get, primarily health care. So we do ask you to pray for Andrea's cancer treatment and for this pregnancy and delivery because he doesn't have, the, the way the Dominicans do it is if you're Dominican, you get health care. If you're not, you don't. And so, even though he lives in a nice place, there are basic needs that he's not. And so he does function as a missionary. He's with the same board that uh, Becky's with, uh, the Missionary Clearinghouse. And uh, oh, we went to Eddie's church, uh, and I preached Sunday morning. Uh, I love this church, um, and I don't even speak the language. Uh, they were so warm and welcoming. The music was done so well. It was an older gentleman running the music, but man, he just communicated love. And then the younger people were the rest, but it was clear that he was directing them. And uh, just the whole service flowed towards the preaching. Uh, the pastor there put signs up on the walls. One's on a cell phone, you know, with, in a little circle, no cell phones. But there was another sign. I asked Eddie, what is that? He said, well, pastor's a little firm on this. You do not get up once the preaching starts. And so there's literally a sign that says, do not get up. Once, and that's how I was able to preach for 45 minutes. Uh, they preached for 45 minutes there, um, and uh, the whole service moves towards the preaching. And there's scripture up in the front of the church, and it says um, everyone should be silent before the Lord. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing how it all built, and it was all congregational music. There was, there was no, the only person that gets indicated is the guy that stands in the pulpit. Nothing else is lifted up, and uh, it was just, it was an amazing experience. For someone who could not even understand the language, I, I wanted to stay after church, and I couldn't talk to anybody. But I still wanted to stay after church. And um, so it, it was great to go there. And uh, there's the song leader I was talking about, the youth on the side doing the rest of the music. But let me tell you, um, I preached up on the platform, and we had air conditioning and a fan. And then when I stepped down after preaching, it was like walking into a heat wave. And this is what um, Mac's talking about with all that. So I, I felt for the people in the congregation because it was pretty hot. Well, because we went to the Capitol to preach in, um, in uh, Eddie's church, we just decided to stay in the Capitol, go to Justo's church at the end of the day. And so we spent some time in the middle of the day going into the main city there of Santo Domingo and seeing a few things. And uh, so that was nice for those that hadn't been in Dominican at all. Uh, this is a fort that I'd never seen, even though this was trip 10. Um, so we got to go on the fort, and um, I realized um, how not in shape I was when I climbed to the top of the fort. And, uh, oh, there you go. See, I'm standing on ground level. I'm not into risk. Um, but the rest of the family there, I will, I will say, John, he did a great job on the trip. He was a big help. He really was. Karen had a great time. Here's the teachers, everybody that taught on the trip. And... Uh, so we just did a little bit of uh, walking around there as, uh, as long as we could uh, make it in the heat. And then uh, we went to Husto's church. This is the back row of Husto's uh, church. How they stop people from sitting in the back row is they give the row to the deacons. But it's also a quick way for the pastor to know if the deacons are there. So uh, we sat there and I thought, well, that's pretty cool. I want to get a sign with that because I had Mac there. And I want to thank pastor. He took a risk, you know. He sent a pastor with me and a deacon, and I'm a deacon. And so he sent a good part of his leadership there. And so we got a quick picture there. Uh, this is a man that preached in Justo's church that night. That night, there was some kind of conference going on locally in the Capitol, and 70 people were gone. Uh, so it was good that we went to church. We, we helped make up a part of the congregation there. Oh, that was the song leader. All right, so there's a, the fort that we climbed. I did climb all the way to where that flag is. Dominican flag, only flag in the world with a Bible on it. Just saying. Uh, there's Michael. 
And there's Andrea. Please pray for Andrea. There's their son, Nathan, full of energy. Every Dominican child seems to be that way, full of energy, though he's Costa Rican. Uh, there's the team, Gus. We always are starting to uh, meet Gus. We were so thankful because Gus was going to follow up and go to many of the same places that we went. So then we knew the orphanage would get another hit of food, another hit of propane, catheters. They need catheters in the nursing home. He was going to go to Santana. We went to Oliveres, so that was good. Both sugarcane villages were covered. And Gus had 40 uh, with him there. So he's, he's continuing to minister strong. I appreciate him because he started this. I went on a, a trip with Mac and uh, Dan and we went to build a church and I remember Gus pulling me aside afterwards and he said, you are never to come on a building trip again. Uh, that's not my strong suit. What I need you to do is I need you to disciple guys. And that's how this all started and this was trip number 10. And I thank this church. I thank those who faithfully give. Uh, you might ask yourself, do they really need more? They really, they really need more. They really need more. And so we had a great time there. Uh, again, as Max said, how do we put a week in this presentation tonight? I don't know that we can. So you feel free to talk to any of us, and especially Mac. He's got photos to the end of the earth on his phone. And um, don't ask me about my phone. It doesn't work in the Dominican. That's one of the blessings of going to the Dominican. The phone doesn't even work. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this church and the impact they are making on an entire region as they reach out to 53 church leaders and their wives. And Father, we're just, we just pray the gospel would go forth clear and clean. We pray against the cults that are coming into the area where we're ministering. Father, we pray that people would be trained and that they would have an answer and that they would direct people to Jesus. And there would come a day where they're so thoroughly trained that we don't go anymore because they're doing the work themselves so that you might send us somewhere else and we might repeat the process even as you did with those in the scriptures. Father, help us to get close to the Bible uh, in the way that we live. And I thank you uh, for the ministry of helps, the generosity of this church, the materials that they've provided, the people they send. And I just thank you for all those that went on this trip with me, the support they were uh, to those people there, but also to me and the encouragement they were to me. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.